she got so excited. <laughs> Came over this little crest, this thing just staring at us. Like, no way! My original was like, oh my gosh, it's better. It's, it's just a big boulder, but um, I mean, pretty cool. So we immediately were like, we, were, we weren't even considered uh, concerned what was upstream at this point. We were just like, okay, let's just run this now, and then let's keep going upstream. Um, so here's the lip. It was pretty cool. It was this really cool flumey thing. I had no idea what it would do to me. Um, I thought it was going to swallow me, but I, I ended up going on top of it. It was pretty cool. Um, so we head back to the car, um, find a gorge upstream that was pretty sweet. Uh, we don't have any, this is a still from our video, but uh, we found some weakness in the rock. We came down that, so we got the raft down to the gorge, uh, dropped in. Um, had a couple cool drops down there um, before the gorge. It's starting to open up here a little bit. Um, it's starting to open up. Some cool rapids, some fun, some kind of granitic rock. Uh, I think it's more like nice likes, a little combo. Um, Go down, pretty fun. There's Brian right there. Uh, so we do that section. We go upstream, try and find some more cold drops. We want to just go as far as the road would take us. Find this guy running. It was fun. Kind of maybe. Keep heading. Um, keep heading around. So at this point, um, we decide we want to check out as many creeks as we possibly can. We have like a week or so left. Um, and there are creeks just coming in left and right, and we're like, okay, this is the gold one. We found it. We know that. Let's take our time and document every creek, because if we kayak all the time, we, uh, we'll only get a kayak a couple, and we won't know it's here for next time. So um, we keep heading around some more senior stuff. It's pretty cool. And there's creeks in this whole other place. And so I've got like uh, 26 or so detailed documentation on all these creeks, flow, gradient, rock quality, um, a guesstimation of the season. You can, you can kind of guess it sort of stuff a little bit, depending on the drinks uh, size. Um, so these are all some different ones. Really cool. Stoked to go back. Uh, left my kayak over there in China. Um, and so if you ever wonder where your countertops come from, they come from here. <laughs> what is literally two cents? Cost us two hundred dollars. If only we had shipped some of these back. Um, so there's some more rivers. Uh, really cool. Like literally, we were just ecstatic. Uh, this is the gold mine. Just really cool, continuous boulder drop. Um, and then these rivers. And this, I, I, I'm super excited to do this one. It'd be a mission. It'd be so hard to get back there. You can't tell, but it is like pain in the butt if you want to. Get over these mountains, it's really intense. But um, I was stuck, so I took a lot of pictures. And the zooming in, pretty cool. And then it's that top little bit, you can't see the way up there. I just like looking at this, I'm like, okay, I think that could be better out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, pretty excited about that one. Um, there's more creeks coming in from the other side. Another one coming down, looks like some really cool stuff. Uh, cool mountain. This was. Um, a massive flooding creek we came across. Guy walking across the bridge was crazy. It's me, had to go down there. It's pretty awe inspiring, pretty powerful. Um, so, Yangtze, Mekong, Salween. This is the Salween's future. If no one steps forward, the company doesn't change, thought patterns don't change. The Salween, as of right now, is free flowing. It goes from source to sea, no dams. It's one of the longest free flowing rivers in the world. Um, it's amazingly gorgeous. But like I said, this is its future if that thing stops. These are all proposed dams, 10, 15, 20 years out. No construction yet. Um, so it's it's kind of a it looms over you when you're there. But I believe, I mean these are under construction, like the color change shows. The Great Bend is in a much more dire position than the Salween is. And I'm really excited about the Salween's possibility of saving itself, uh, natural resource wise. I'll explain that in a second. And kind of starts with this guy, John Muir. Um, so basically, we had the Industrial Revolution first, China's following. Why not uh, take a look at our conservation movement? So, we kind of first had our movement real early on. 
Obviously, we're still working through it. We had kind of the inception quite a while ago. Um, and then we had our interstate systems put in place, our infrastructure. This is how we can get around. And then all of a sudden, you have an economic boom. You've got money in their pockets, time on their watches. Everyone wants and buys a car, and they go and travel. So you have the uh, <clears throat> places set aside, like the national parks. You've got the roads. You've got the car. You've got the time. You've got the money. Chronologically, it was perfect. It was really perfect. Had something out of whack. This might be totally different. Um, this is Yosemite, a national park, obviously. One drainage north. No, it's not just north. It's south. I'm totally confused. Anyways, Hedge Hedgey. It's in the national park. It was dammed and flooded. It's a dam right. It's a lake right now. Um, because San Francisco's water rights spoke stronger than the national park at the time. That would never happen now. The fact that it did. Um, so if stuff like that had kept happening back then, we would be in a much different position. We wouldn't maybe go visit, be visiting Banff currently, like that could be a mine or whatever. Um, this is the reality in China. These places are in, uh, are in dire condition. And so China's going through the same things, just a little different. Um, and it's, it's bad, but there's a lot of positive too. This just demonstrate the road infrastructure it's incredible. They're building roads everywhere. You can drive wherever you want. Uh, maybe not necessarily, but there's interstates take you wherever you want really fast. Um, a lot of uh, basically we consider state roads, provincial roads. Um, everyone wants a car, and everyone's getting cars. This is because the infrastructure in cities can't keep up with the with the pace people are buying cars. Literally, there's not a parking spaces. People are killing over parking spaces. People are getting in fights and people are dying because some guy wants to park there and some other guy wants to park there. Like, this is the reality of how many cars have we bought in China. Um, did anybody hear of the nine-day traffic jam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't find anything to conclude my hypothesis, but I believe old people died, natural part of life, and I think babies were born during this traffic jam. And where are you born? <laughs> Nine day traffic jam back in 2010. I was born there, back in semi. I mean, nine days, babies were born. Um, so, the roads we put in, the cars exploding, and the middle class is exploding. The middle class is booming. So many more people are entering that bracket of having expendable income. And the number one purchase item is they all want a car. All want a car. So, that is good. I mean, economically, it's crazy. It's hard to fathom, you know, the whole car emission thing and everything. It's bad. But everything, everything bad, there's good that comes out of it. And these things put together, um, I was asking some of the tour operators over there. There's not a ton. Uh, outdoor recreation is not big in China currently. Uh, sightseeing and stuff like that um, is obviously a little more popular. But I was asking them, and I was like, so who... Who do you cater to? And I'm, I'm talking like an Australian in China, you know, like, do you get backpackers? Do you have international? He's like, 99% of my clients are Chinese. He's like, and they're just more every year. He's like, international? I, I don't care. It's all about marketing the Chinese. They're exploding. If you can take that and direct them towards their own backyard and show them what they got, I, I think you can make some change. Um, this is the salami. <laughs> This is what we're trying to say. I mean, just look at it. If this was here, it would be a national park. It really would. If, I mean, I was just there for a day and a half. I couldn't exactly take like all the cool pictures I'd like to take. I was just stuck on a road, you know? Um, couldn't do a whole lot. But just try to imagine what this place looks like. You never, you never don't see at least four waterfalls. Like, they are everywhere. It's ridiculous. It is a, it is a pretty lush place. Um, Cliffs everywhere, fog, sunny days, you got it all. There's a great to pull the rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great place. Um, and then uh, again, when you can see the, uh, the ridge line above you, it gets pretty fabulous. Another stretch where it uh, was straight for a little bit so you could get a glimpse. Pretty cool. Um, and so, with a couple days left, we decided we want to hike to Burma. Um, the whole buying a car illegally was no longer as exciting, so we decided why not enter a country we're not allowed in. Um, it was so close. And so this is all our food. 
Um, we hiked up the side drainage. We picked, we picked one near kind of a town. There's a town in the Salwe Valley. We decided, well, the likelihood of a trail going from that side up into the Irrawaddy over the ridge is probably likely. So we started heading up this drainage. Um, this would be a cool thing to hike. It was like a death waterfall right here on the rocks, unfortunately. But um, we're heading up, and it's starting to get pretty cool. Anybody ski? Here we go. Lock, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I kid you not, if you want to do some ridiculous first descents, come to China. Because you can kayak extremely long couloirs. I mean, this is really late in the season, right? Imagine this thing. But so we're looking at them, and we're like, wait, are those trees next to the couloirs? And this is just one. There are some much more crazy animals. But you could kayak an intensely crazy couloir with a jungle next to you. Like, literally, there are monkeys out there. You could, you, did I say kayak? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a skier. <laughs> you can try if you want it. Anyways, yeah, I mean, I was like, right. um, So, yeah, you can ski on this thing with monkeys next to you in the trees. Like, literally. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it exists. Obviously, it shows you what I know about skiing. Um, so we keep heading up, getting into some pretty cool stuff. Uh, starting to get some cool views across the valley and stuff. These different, uh, it's more of the waterfall that are everywhere. This picture obviously looks doctored. It's because it was exposed improperly and I have a mess there so you can see what's going on. It's pretty cool. Like the terrain is getting fabulous. Um, getting higher. We spend the night up there as was planned. Ended up being so much more cold than we thought. We left our sleeping bags down below because I don't like carrying a lot of stuff. And I decided I'd put my backpack with food instead. And so we are so cold right now. Uh, that's Brian looking at you with a hypothermic face. We uh, literally just like curled up on the ground and shivered all night long. And we ran up top here where the sun was beating and was trying to be warm. Um, we keep heading up. It's getting pretty cool. You can see some mountains over there. There's some that are closer. But, um, so this is the cell we need down here, running up like that. On the other side of this is the Mekong. Behind me is Burma, going downhill into the Irrawaddy. Um, so we get up top and just basically soak it up. These were some guys crossing the trail across one family, making the hike over. They just trade goods. It was pretty crazy. We were having a tough time on the trail. There's like this <laughs> past like this tall, fully grown. Um, so we uh, hanging out, getting some views, and um, yeah, I mean, these are my last couple pictures, and I really do it because it, I don't know. Mountain pictures to me just kind of sum up the whole environment. You um, you've got the beginnings of a river, of a creek right here. You've got you've got the snow, you've got the rock, you've got it all. Um, it's pretty cool. This is from our high point. We didn't actually end up making it to Burma. Um, it was too far. We were going to have to spend another night out. And, and it was way too cold for that. So we went back down. <laughs> um, not sure not enough for a failed mission. That's okay. That's kind of what it was all about. That trip really. um, but so, okay, because at this point, all this stuff I kind of mentioned is really um, sinking into us. And we're starting to realize we had totally accidentally stepped into a world we were not expecting. And, um, and it was crazy because all these different, um, these variables are pulling you a different way. You're seeing what's happening to the Great Bend. You're seeing what happened to our main commission, um, which I kindly call the Kansi River. Um, but that dam uh, popped up. And you see the map of the Salway, you see what has happened with the rivers and what could happen with this one. And if you know about all the economics in China, I'm thinking, you know what? These people one day are going to have their money, they're going to have their time, they're going to hit the road, and they're going to only find mines and reservoirs. Um, we're so lucky that we can go down the road and, and see our beautiful places. China's future is uncertain. They might not be able to do that. They might just be coming over here and uh, visiting Baltimore. I mean, it's already happening. It's going to keep there.